presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 19th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, let your fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now, the Dow off eight points. Trade out 24.783, S&P down 4, NASDAQ 100 up 6 tenths of a percent or 38 points, 64.75 is what it's printing at. Russell 2000 down 4 tenths of a percent, that's about 6 points. Semis are off about 4 tenths of a percent. The uh, trannies are uh, flat, they're actually up 9 points out there. Spot volatility next up about 2.8 percent, trading out at 980, well underneath the 50-day uh, exponential Moving average out there. You got uh, gold back 240, silver off six pennies. Lights be crude up 34 cents. Leading the charge here to the upside, it is price line up nine dollars or half a percent. Uh, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals up eight bucks or ten percent. Zimmer Biomet Holdings up around seven percent or seven bucks and change. Shire PLC up six bucks. PBB Bank Corp up well 49 percent. That's a heck of a move. Alta Beauty up 580 to the downside. It's a Faxet Research FDS down 15 bucks or seven and a half percent. Lending Tree off 980. Equinix uh, uh, down about 970. Google's off 920. Um, so there's plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And the first question that came in was really a two-part question, and it was, uh, "Hey Steve, is the uh, Nasdaq or the NQ topping has it formed a top?" And uh, also, what kind of correlation is there between the NASDAQ and the uh, semiconductor indice out there? So let's go take a look at that. Here's what we would, we'll start from the daily chart and work our way back. And we'll do that by taking a look at the NQ. So uh, when we take a look at the NQ, we can see that price has been moving higher, doing less relative energy. We know that because of the black diagonal lines, lower left to upper right out here. Uh, that pattern doesn't mean a thing unless it's got that swing. In our case, a swing would be some type of bearish reversal signal. Aha! We do have a bearish reversal signal as of 110 in the afternoon. You've got a nice little bear sash candle. Does that mean that the NQ has topped? It means you've got potential. So it has the potential as of 110 to give us a short-term topping signal out here. What's really needed, though, is we need to see a close below Stevie's red line. 64.71 and change. So it's going to be approximately that level as we come into today's close. I don't know how the market's going to respond the rest of the afternoon, and we'll go take a look at short-term charts, see what we can figure out out here. But the answer is, if, in fact, the NQ were to close below 64.71, then it's a real candidate for a short-term top. Now let's continue backing up. And by backing up, I mean let's go look at the four-hour chart and then the two-hour chart and then the 30-minute chart out here. So we take a look at the four-hour chart. We will see. I don't make this stuff up. We will see that uh, earlier this morning, 
it made its way to a seventh wave move. That's characterized by the letter G that is on my chart out here. That is the uh, that is the uh, two four hour chart for the NQ singing in the Stevie Wonder key of G out here, and. He had price movement higher doing less relative energy, similar to what we looked at on the daily chart. You then had a bearish reversal signal, and price got down below Stevie's red line on this time frame, 65.30. That does set up that there's a possibility of a move down to about the 64.20 level. Uh, if, in fact, other things occur. And those other things, we're going to go take a look at them because we're going to look at what's the market breadth inside the NASDAQ 100, one step at a time. If we take a look at the two-hour chart for the NQ, it, too, moving higher, doing less relative energy. Bearish reversal signal shows up on this chart at 6 o'clock. You get some follow-through. Price has already made it down to its first level of support. That, these are the, that is these dashed red lines out here that was really the beginning or the low of the uh, tom to mark nine count last time that one was in place we also use those levels as uh, short term or uh, support or resistance in this case here support so prices hit a level of support out here inside of the nq when we take a look at that two hour chart how about a 30 minute chart out here well 30 minute chart price moving higher doing less relative energy Get the bullish reversal signal really right here at 6.30 this morning. Now we can see here, let me hit the update out here, price on a 30-minute basis has also been moving lower, doing a less relative energy out here. So here's what I would be looking at. I would be looking at the 30-minute chart, Stevie's red line, 6503. We'll call it 6504 out there. If price gets above that, then it was a uh, false alarm out there a false alarm and yes i'm just reminded here about the fact that the uh, moon was closest uh, furthest away from uh, earth and that was at uh, 2012 801 i believe last evening and if we take a look at that uh, pivot point out here that level is going to be uh, 65 36 75 the price would need to close above in order to get all bullish out there now Let's go take a look at market breadth because market breadth helps you to identify false alarm or not. And we're going to start with the short term. We're going to start with the 60-minute time frame chart out here. And what we can see, the red line, by the way, is referring to the number of issues on a 60-minute time frame where price is trading below the box. If you trade below the box, the bottom profile out there, it at least eliminates the long side of the trade and would give you a potential short-term signal out here. Short-term short signal is what I really should say. Of course, it's short-term. We're only looking at 60 minutes. On the left-hand side of my screen, you will see that there are 41 issues. That's the green line that are above the top of the box. You'll see that there are 45 below the box. You'll see these two lines. No degree of separation here. Um, and uh, but But nonetheless, you do have a potential of a little bearish cross on the market breadth out here on a short-term basis. We didn't look at a 60-minute time frame chart. We can do that, though. We can just simply come over here. We can take a look at this. Let's just see what the 60-minute time frame chart was doing uh, earlier this morning. A same type of move. Let's go ahead and count the uh, waves. Looks like, well, let's not, uh, let's, I don't know if that's the bottom or not out here. Uh, and I'm going to get a chance to find, oh, yeah, that was the bottom out here. Uh, was that the seventh wave? I don't know. Let me see here. No, it was not. But price was also moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. Look, when we come back from this break, we'll finish this off. We'll go look at the daily, the 240-minute uh, profiles for market breadth. I'll just tell you right now, they're still bullish in a big way. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, as we're we're, lo we're looking as we return, we're taking a look at the uh, four-hour time frame chart uh, for the uh, Nasdaq 100. We're taking a look at the market breadth. You can see here the green line well above that red line, meaning there's 52 issues trading above the top of their box versus 25 below the box. You've got 33 that are in between out there. If you total all those up, um, actually, you almost get uh, five, eight, ten. Uh, you, so you get about 100 and uh, 110 issues, it looks like. Maybe inside the NASDAQ 100, you got to love it. But look, the bottom line here is this is still bullish breadth out here. So, uh, and when we take a look at the daily uh, chart, you're going to see also well ahead of the game, 58 issues above the box, only six below the box. So this is very strong uh, market breadth statistics out here. If you take a look at the uh, weekly profiles, the weekly profiles have 58 stocks above their weekly and 11 below. 11 below out here so at this stage of the game um it's really more about the short-term trader in utilizing this uh this information why did price stop where it was this morning you know i i don't know the answer to that specifically what i do know is if i go to a, a shorter term chart out here just trying to get back to the shorter term traders um we can see that price was moving lower doing less relative energy you had a nice little bullish reversal candle as we came on the air at one o'clock we now have price above stevie's red line 2688 is the number looks to me like 2691 is the next price point that is under attack if you close above that prices should continue higher inside of the that, that was the es i apologize that was the es that i was looking at let me go out here and put up the nq let's see if it was making the same pattern don't know if it was or it wasn't but we're going to find out for you um no reason to uh, uh bait switch as they say so is the yeah the nq making the same pattern let's just do uh just out of curiosity the wave counts to the downside this is a 15 minute chart that you and i are looking at not only made it to uh, singing in the key of f out there F minor, uh, uh, too. But we can see price was moving higher, doing less relative energy. Um, this says 6502 was the number where you're going to see the NQ bounce to. You're at 6494. You get above 6502, there's more pep in its step. Now, to answer that question, is the uh, NDX 
um, correlated to other uh, indices such as the semiconductor index. Uh, here we just simply go back to our correlation chart. The, uh, the candle chart that you're looking at is the NASDAQ 100. The bottom panel represents the uh, semiconductors, the socks out here. And if we take a look at that, all of the lines that are to the upside, above zero, so to speak, tell you there's a positive correlation, directional. Price moving higher in the NASDAQ, then you typically are going to see price moving higher in the semis. So, yes, the answer is there is a uh, big correlation uh, to uh, both of these uh, indices out here. Back to the NDX, uh, not to beat this uh, horse to death out here, but if we take a look at what it's doing at this stage here, it's come back to really the last time it broke out. That was a gap from yesterday. Volume was about 26 million shares. So far today, you've done 16. Hard to tell whether or not um, it's going to do a similar type of volume or more as we speak today, but any close above 157.82 was nothing more than a test and rejection of a uh, level of support. And we're trading at 157.61 right now. So, again, the number there would be 156.23. But I, utilize, I personally utilize the QQQ ETF to make trade. In fact, I, I, only, I only use the Qs to make trading decisions with one pattern. You can throw out, in my opinion, you can throw out all of the other stuff here, um, and, I, and I, I think it's more so to do with uh, to do with the way that the cues are used to hedge funds, not by hedge funds, but the hedge funds certainly use it and so forth. The only pattern that I have found that has been consistent inside of the Nasdaq 100 are the way bottoms are made, and you know the answer: bottoms are made with volume out here. That's right. When you see big volume inside of the queues, it is a sign <coughs> that a bottom has approached or is approaching out here. So that's the best pattern that I've been able to identify inside of the queues. Had another question to take a look at gold. This is from Larry. Uh, what the heck happened here? Cancel that. <coughs> Larry is asking about gold basically and bonds and its correlation interest rates um but uh here is what here's what i would say with regard to because i believe in reading your question here that you're trying to figure out um you're trying to figure out if rates are going up can gold go up as well out there and what I'll do, Larry, is uh, during the break here, I'll just simply go ahead and put uh, the uh, Treasury yield chart along with gold up on my screen, and we can try to answer that question for you. We'll just go back and, and take a look at history. Here's what we know about gold right now, which is trading down a buck seventy. Gold here formed one of those seventh wave moves, uh, one, two, three, four, five trading sessions ago. And price right now is above the red line. Important red line, that oscillator and change line, 1257.20. As long as gold stays above that level, it has a chance for more of a counter trend rally. We don't know if it's a bottom, could be a bottom, but right now we're going to take this one step at a time. It'll be counter trend rally. What happens if gold closes below 1257.20? It would be very bearish for gold because there's nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. You'd take out, uh, well, you wouldn't take out that uh, seventh wave move, that letter G out here, but we're not there yet. So the, what, what the message of this chart suggests to me is that um, is that uh, uh, gold still has more counter trend rallying. It's the only way that I can read it. I would change that reading if price were to get down below 1257.20 out here. That's what this chart says. The other thing that we can do, Larry, is we can go take a look at our, our uh, TAS profiles and take a look at the uh, gold contract out here. So let's go put that up on our screen. We're going to do this with Stevie synthetic contract. And the other level, so he, that was the bullish case. What's the bearish case on uh, gold? The bearish case on gold would really be, there's, there's the one bearish case, the largest bearish case, would be that uh, this is the second day in a row where gold has tried to uh, get above the bottom of the TAS market profile on a weekly basis. That number is 1266.10. Larry, that's a number that I would be watching because if price were to close above that, well, then that would suggest that you're back inside the range, so to speak. And the range here, 
being all the way up into that 1322 level. There's also a short-term trend line, right? The trend is your friend. Danny put in this screen, um, basically our friend, the yen, but he was also really talking about the trend is your friend, or I'm going to go ahead and suggest, I'm going to put words into his mouth out here. And there was a trend line, a short-term trend line, off the of lows in December 2016. Next uh, touch point was really the low in July of 2016. 17 and the price fell out of favor there it broke below the trend the week of december 4th it stayed below there was a test and rejection last week this week so far we're having a test and rejection of that trend line so what gold needs to do to confirm what we looked at on that previous chart larry it's got to close above 12 66 10 preferably just a tad higher than that steve Rhodes with tfnn i'll go to work on putting together that chart with gold and rates We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So as we take a look at uh, this chart here, the uh, top chart shows you the 13-week uh, uh, T-bill rates out here. And what Larry was talking about was some short-term rates. And so we can take a look at it. The bottom chart is the uh, continuous contract for gold. And in essence, the, the question was, 
one, is there any correlation? Two, can uh, can gold move higher with rates moving higher? And if we go back really to the 2004 time frame, this is these are weekly charts that we're looking at. You can see how uh, rates were moving quite a bit higher from about the what one and a third uh, percent, or just below one percent, all the way up to the five percent level out here. And gold certainly was rising during that same time period. And we can see that uh, gold really, well, first gold, quite frankly, bottomed. We're going to say gold bottom back in 2016. Uh, we made a lower, a, a higher low back here. Uh, well, it's a weekly chart. So really 2015, the end of December 2015. We made a higher low in the middle of December 2016. Now we may be making a higher low in the middle of December 2017. But during that same time period here, rates were moving higher. So is there a correlation or really the question was, can gold move higher with rates moving higher? And the answer is yes, most certainly. If we take a look at another question that came up, which is, uh, tell us, what do you make of the gold contract holding gains, whereas the uh, T-bond is uh, moving lower? And yesterday, let me just go grab that file out here. It seems like that correlation has become unglued out here. And I mean that in a positive way, I suppose. Here is a chart showing uh, gold, 10-minute chart, with its bars on the top screen, bonds on the bottom screen, and the yen on the uh, bottom screen as well. Now, there is directional correlation here, uh, at least as of 7.20 uh, in the morning this morning. We've seen gold pulling back. We have seen T-bond futures pulling back, and we have seen the yen pulling back here. So what do we make of it? Really a directional correlation. Um, that that actually is in play uh, more so out here. So uh, and so then to go back to Danny's question, he posted uh, is our friend the yen. And if we take a look at the uh, March contract here for yen futures, what has taken place thus far in the level that we would be watching. And this is kind of critical for the yen. Uh, you'll see that the uh, Stevie's red line is priced out at 0.8889. Uh, that level was almost hit so far today. And then what's important about this right now is that price oscillator is, in essence, at the zero level. So if the message is going to be, let's say, bullish for bonds, assuming the correlation, directional correlation continues, bullish for gold, assuming the correlation continues, what you really want to see here is uh, the yen, yen futures close above Stevie's red line. Because if it closes below that, it could be an early warning signal because you'd have a falling price oscillator below zero, assuming that the three are going to be continue to be directionally correlated. Well, what's that mean? How would you trade it? Look, I would say if you're long gold, you can't give up that position until you see it close below its red line of 1257.30 out here. With regard to T-bonds, it looks basically ugly. And when I say it looks ugly, it's really broken. Uh, it's got a, uh, it's trading below Stevie's red line. It's broken through a little rising price channel out here. Is it the end of the world for bonds? And the answer is no, not necessarily. Let's do this out here. Let me do this. Let me start with a uh, brand new chart for the uh, Treasury bond. And I think that, uh, yeah, give me a second here. So just grab a new page. Let me get this uh, chart going. And uh, so let's go uh, put in the uh, let's put in the March 2018 Treasury bond for well uh, uh, maybe maybe we'll do that maybe no let's put in the continuous contract that's just going to be way easier for me to I think I saw a pattern out here so I just want to and it should be okay should be okay um, here is the here is the here is the key that I'm looking at, the pattern that I'm looking at. So in essence, what we've got out here, I'll, I'll, I'll just use whatever color arrow. So here we've got a high. This high that I'm referring to is back in September. So you've got September 8th is a high. Here we've got a low, this low coming in right here on October 27th. We then get a bounce, and in essence, we have a lower high right here. And with regard to the uh, treasuries, if it doesn't take out and find some way to bottom here, let's go with the assumption that... Uh, uh, the yen futures find a bottom, and treasuries go ahead and they bounce from here. And we, and price does not take out. It's testing, by the way, the swing point from October 20. What is that? The 27th out here. So it's tested that swing point. But if it doesn't close below that level, 
um, and it continues to then trade higher, that has the possibility, believe it or not, for a breakout pattern. Now, this is just a possibility. S certain things have to happen. The first thing that has to happen is uh, just simply that this cannot make a lower low in order for the breakout pattern that I'm taking a look at to uh, go ahead and uh, follow suit. Then for it to be a breakout pattern, price has to take out the September 8, 2017 area. Is any of that going to happen? I don't know. But it is a pattern worth paying attention to and noting out here. So that's, I guess, about uh, beat that horse to death out there. But that is what I uh, see. Uh, if I overlooked any other questions in the den, would you be kind enough to just simply repaste that in there for me? In the meantime, what I want to do is go take a look at the uh, email requests that have come in. John in Sarasota says, Hi, Steve. What can you see for SSO six months out? SSO is uh, the long position for the S&P 500. So that's the real question that is being asked. And uh, in order to do that, to give you some kind of long term or longer term, let me see if I can pull up the uh, primary trading ranges for the S&P 500. I mean, I know I can. I just have to find it uh, amongst my uh, list of stuff out here. Uh, there we go. So let's see. Let's see if this pulls it up. And so, John, what I'm going to do is look at the monthly chart here for the S&P. And what we want to uh, – this thing changed. This thing shifted a bit. Um, let me see. Let me see. What else am I going to do? What else am I going to do? Let's um, – so – sorry to sorry to pause like that. But uh, I'll have to come back and rework on this chart. So that means I've got to go to game plan B. Game plan B, I don't have it yet, but I'm going to pull it out of my you-know-what. Um, game plan B says, let's go look at, how do I answer your question? What do we see inside the S&P 500 um, for the next six months? So the next six months takes us up into the sell in May type of zone out here. So inside, and you're asking about SSO, so really that means we've got to go take a look at the uh, SPY in essence. So let's do that. And because you're taking a look at a, a longer-term time frame, let's take a look at a monthly chart out here. And the monthly chart shows us that uh, the price projection for the SPYs, and then you can just go ahead and make a equivalent pattern out here, uh, for the uh, SSO would be the price target I'd be looking at is about 327.77 inside of the SPIs. Now, the B point on a weekly basis, monthly basis, I should say, was 1.8 million shares, and that was passed with uh, 2 million shares back on November, the week of November 2016. So you've got a nice confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So 327.77, John, that's the target. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Hogan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hey, welcome back, uh, folks. You know, to answer John's question specifically, here is the chart for the SSO. That's the uh, ProShares Alter S&P 500. Now, what you're going to notice is off of the March 2009 lows, the A to B equals CD. You're going to see that price, in essence, has hit the one-to-one -one target out there. 111.44 is the number. So far, the high has been 111.01. Now, many people might say, ah, oh, this is the time to buy. It's completed the A to B equals CD out here. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, this leg here, meaning the leg, uh, the second leg, the C to D leg, is so much stronger than the leg off of the 2009 bottom to the highs out here in 2015. The way that price is moving along this leg out here, it is mucho grande strong. Strong and long out here. Now, your next price target becomes 128.32 on the Richter scale, the A to B equals CD Richter scale out here. But that doesn't mean the price is going to stop there. That just really becomes your next price target out there. Above that is 149.79 out here. So, and this is a monthly chart that we're looking at. So, uh, those become your next uh, price target areas. And uh, thanks for writing in and happy holidays to you as well. Uh, Phil has a question. Let's go see what Phil's question is. I'm long light sweet crude on an intraday trade here, but notice action is very tight in a triangle on the daily. Does your market profile give any clue as to which direction? Lightspeed crude will break. Well, let's go take a look at that. Let's go back to those profiles and let's take a look at Lightspeed crude. We'll put up the synthetic contract so we can get the uh, best, what I consider to be the best information out here. And uh, let's take a look at those uh, profiles. So when we take a look at Lightspeed crude, the profiles to focus in on, I would believe, Phil, uh, I know you're in on a short term trade. Um, in a short term trade, things look pretty good to me. Uh, I don't know what you mean by short-term trade, but and what do I mean by that? All I see out here are a series of higher lows at this stage. Uh, yes, there's beginning, maybe beginning this little triangle. Perhaps this is the triangle that you're referring to out here. Let's just actually grab a arrow out here. Oh, I did have an arrow. So this may be the uh, this may be the 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 so-called. You've got a couple of lower highs, but look at all of the higher lows that you have out here. So yeah, maybe it's uh, tightly wound, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I don't see the triangle pattern as much. And this is looking at 240 minute chart out here. Um, so I'm going to go off as I'm going to take say, let's take us off the 240. Let's take us off the 60 minute chart. Let's get back to the question of what do the profiles really tell us about with regard to what light sweet crude is doing? It's really the daily profile is the one that sticks out to me the most, Phil. 
And what I mean by that is that there is clear resistance at 5831, give or take, and on a closing basis, basically, 5831. And to a certain extent, gold is not, or not gold, light sweet crude is not doing much, even on a daily basis, because it is trading within a range. It's why these bars are all gray out here. Now, the nice thing is, potentially for someone like yourself, is that you've got a range between 5558 and 5831. That's a pretty good range to be trading on an intraday basis. But price is closer to resistance than it is to support out here. Um, of course, uh, from a breakout standpoint, you'd like to see it close above 5831 out here. That would be nice. Now, this box out here, this profile box, is uh, structured as a bearish uh, profile. That tells us that snipers are really trying to hold down the fort at that 5831 area, give or take a few pennies out here. But that is where the snipers are hooked up. Now, the last time they weren't able to push price all the way down to 50, 55, 58 to explore that entire box. But nonetheless, this really is a sideways move. So um, if I look at the weekly chart, what it really tells us is 5909 is the number from a resistance level. Above that, prices just simply continue higher. You might say, well, higher to where? Where the heck is light speed crude grow going if it's going to break through that uh, level out there? And uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd come back to my profiles probably in order to answer that. So one thing at a time. Now, from a short-term standpoint, from a short-term standpoint, what else can I provide you with? On a 60-minute basis out here, you have a brand-new profile that formed during this hour. That's the 1 to uh, 2 o'clock uh, time frame. It began at 1 o'clock. Not, not till 2. This will last until the next one uh, um, forms out here. And if price moves about 57.62, that's going to be short-term bullish for you as price will be moving above a brand-new profile that formed. Uh, in the same time, 57.32 ought to be your level of support. So in summary, what is it that we say about light sweet crude? Look. The range on this is about 58.31 down into the 56 level, 55.58 to be exact. Uh, and you would need to trade that range in 58.31 to 59.09 is some pretty serious and significant uh, resistance. So thanks for writing in. Best of luck with that uh, trade. Let me just see if there are any other requests out here. If anybody else had their let their fingers do the walking. Tim writes in. Let me see if anybody wrote in before Tim. No. So Tim is asking the question about take a look at SPR. I'm looking at SPR and trying to figure out an entry point uh, for a middle to long term position. Have the best of days. Well, thank you. So let's go take a look at SPR. Let's go figure out what SPR even is. And what we want to do is look at our three time frames out here. So let's look at, and we want to look at a uh, intermediate term entry point and try to figure out where it's headed to. This is Spirit Aero Systems. Wow. This thing is, uh, this thing here is broken out. You're at its highs. Yeah. And so it's at its all-time highs out here. Oh, boy. And what a wide-ranging bar this had uh, several months ago, back in August. Uh, in fact, that is a confirmation of an A to B equals CD to the upside. If we take a look at that, this, this longer-term price projection, I'll give you the conservative one, Tim. The longer term, you probably already know this. It's why you're looking at it. It's already hit the one-to-one -one out there. But just like when, uh, when uh, John and I looked at SSO, you did it well. You did as well with us. We saw the price on the left-hand side of the uh, of the C to D leg here. So this is headed to very likely headed to the 9604 area. You're at 8544. So trying to find an entry point and the right reward to risk out there is going to take a bunch of work. Price in this equity is above the closest profile is 8212, and that's a weekly profile uh, that formed uh, about uh, five weeks ago. So, you know, you need a pullback to 8512. Um, and you'd have to see how that is uh, how that is pulling back into that area before you would go ahead and make a, a decision on SPR. So there may be better um, better things for you to look at out here. I'm just going to put a weekly chart. I'm just doing this on my other screen out here to see if I can really see anything out here that's going to make sense to you. Um, and what I mean is make sense from the standpoint of trying to find trying to find some type of uh, place to to enter this type of trade. You know, here's the weekly chart, and here's what we know about this specific equity. Moving higher, doing, less rel doing it with less relative energy out here. 
um, a weekly chart. It did have, we don't see this too often, but it did have a nice continuation pattern right here on the trading session the week of about December the 8th out here, weekend of December the 8th. Um, I think the only thing you can do, like you can chase it. I don't think it's worth the chase um, because I'm not sure where I'd tell you to put the stop on this. And uh, I think you got to be watching this for some type of pullback. And if this were to pull back, your first place to be looking is going to be 82.12. All right, my friend, thanks for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Let's try to do some bottom hunting next time. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender hi folks tom o'brien here if you'd like to get my daily newsletter market insights then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial every morning by 9 30 i send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets currencies and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 16. S&P is down four. So, you know, let's just review a couple of things that we took a look at together during the show thus far. One of those things that we were looking at was uh, the first question that came in is, you know, is the NQ, is the NASDAQ, is it forming a topping pattern out here? We went through a series of charts. And we also then came back to take a look at the market breadth. Now, when we were looking at the market breadth, we were looking at the 16-minute time frame, which had given us a short-term uh, bearish cross. That now, as we speak at 154 in the afternoon, has switched back to the uh, bullish side out here. You've got 45 issues trading back above the top of their daily, 38 down below the bottom. So the first signal here that would suggest that some type of short-term top is in no longer exists with regard to at least the market breadth piece of it. We also were looking inside the NQ at a 50-minute chart. We were taking a look and we suggested that price was going to go test the uh, top of its uh, 
15 minute profile. So that was the 6502 target that we gave you. It's hit that thus far. It did that uh, 15 minute during the last 15 minutes. It's during uh, which means from 130 to 145. We're back there again. If you close above that, then price is going to move higher. And we just simply move from a 15 minute chart to a 30 minute time frame. The 30 minute time frame right now, price is just testing Stevie's red line. You can see how it hit it exactly. That probably did that during the 130 145 level. And now we're back up there. That price point, by the way, is 6503 is what we'll call it. So if price is able to get back above that, there's no reason that price can't move back to the highs. If there's going to be resistance, if there's going to be sellers, in essence, this is the area. The, again, we're looking at short-term charts here. So you have to stay focused on the shorter term, 6503. If your thoughts are, hey, the markets are getting ready to move lower, you want to add to your position, that this would be where it is, but you would also be ignoring that 60-minute uh, profile that had switched back to bullish out there. So um, that's all I got, folks. Stay tuned. There's going to be a replay of something, I'm certain. And then, because it's Tuesday, oh, my goodness, what a show lineup. You got Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5, Andy Heck from 5 to 6. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.